I think the negotiation went very well, don't you? Don't I what? Oh, all right. Don't give me credit. But I think that reciprocal option idea was, if you will forgive me, absolutely brilliant. But not half as brilliant as my idea of sending you through law school so we could save all legal fees. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I don't remember hearing anything about a detour. I want to make Brazzo by sundown, spend the night there. Well, what's that down there? Oh, well, that's a little town called Mineral Springs. I've never been through there before. Well, what have we got to lose? All right. Maybe spending a night in a strange town will help break the monotony of the trip back to Stockton. Get up. get a nice quiet night's sleep. <laughs> How was yours? Awful. But at least the portions are small. Uh, oh. I think you've made a little mistake here. Eleven dollars. You're right, sir. There was a mistake. Thank you for calling it to my attention. That's perfectly all right, young lady. Twelve dollars? I forgot the bread and butter. Young lady, two people can have the finest meal in the most elegant restaurant in San Francisco for half what you charged. San Francisco must be a wonderful place. You can't ask for a better explanation than that. No. Pay the lady before she remembers to charge us with the salt and pepper. Oh, no, ma'am. That comes with the meal. And it was the best part of it. Young lady, I hope you will have the decency to use some of these ill-gotten gains to buy your cook a cookbook. Checking out. Yes, sir. It'll be twenty-eight dollars, sir. Twenty. You're joking. Then shouldn't you be laughing? Fourteen dollars a room. Look, you can get the best suite in New York City for less than that. Well, New York must be a wonderful place. Now look, fourteen dollars a room for this place is outrageous. Well, I can't argue with you on that. If it was fourteen a room. Isn't two times fourteen still twenty-eight? <laughs> he wrecked. Uh, you're a you're a bright young fella, but uh, it was only ten dollars a room. Uh, what's the other eight dollars for? Well, now there was a dollar for horse hitching. Horse hitching? 
I seem to recollect you're hitching up yesterday. Yes, I hitched up to the horse rail. That was the hotel porch rail, private property. There wasn't any place else to hitch. I reckon you're right. And uh, $2 for towels and water, and uh, $3 for feeding and washing the horse. $3? Do you realize I could get a dozen horses fed and washed for $3? Not here. And then there was $2 for miscellaneous. Oh, I'm going to hate myself for asking this, but uh, miscellaneous what? Oh, things like uh, kerosene for the lamps, uh, reading matter. Do you by any chance mean that dog-eared book, uh, Birds of North America? You don't like birds? I love birds, but I'm not too fond of vultures. Oh, Jared, you were lucky. The literature in my room was Ferns Are Our Friends. Look, we didn't even read the books. Might be and uh, might not be. Oh, pay him and let's go. Oh, no, I'm not going to pay him. I'm not going to be taken. I want to talk to the proprietor. Start talking. Ah! Now, look, you may think this is funny, but I don't. You might as well face it. I am not going to pay that bill. You got some trouble, Joe? Well, seems like these folks are fixing not to pay the bill. Well, you know that's against the law. Didn't they teach you that at law school? Now, look, Mother, will you just let me handle this, please? <laughs> Your mama knows best. Uh, <laughs> you really don't want to go to trial over this, do you? Oh, no. I certainly do. Oh. All right, straight in there, folks. You mean to say you try cases in there? Oh, no, no, over there. But the uh, judge won't be holding court till this afternoon. Well, then why do we have to stay in there? <laughs> oh, you don't, ma'am, no. Uh, you just have to post bail. Post bail? How much? Uh, 200 apiece. 150. Well, uh, how about some brush? Oh, that would be nice. Good. Hold it. What do you charge for breakfast? Oh, I won't charge you nothing. Oh, well, in that case, we'll have some. Jared, you're handling this case beautifully. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Would you like to have gone back to Stockton without breakfast? This one's bound to be better than the one at the hotel and free. I wish we were. Uh oh. We're still in enemy territory. Good morning. Breakfast will be three dollars, please. I thought you said there was no charge. Oh, I said I wouldn't charge it. I didn't say what she'd do. Uh, in advance, no doubt. Well, seeing as how you're behind bars, your credit isn't as good as it might be. She's got a point. I told you I'd handle this. I know you did, but I'm in jail and I'm hungry. Oh, all right, here's your three dollars. Thank you. Ew. The cook did not buy the cookbook. Municipal Court of Mineral Springs is now in session. Judge Ben Moore presiding. Thank you, honey. All right, Elmo, what's the problem? Well, these folks don't want to pay Joe's bill. You don't? We certainly don't. Oh. Seems about right to me. On the contrary, Your Honor, it clearly violates the principle of quantum merit, clearly established by the case of Crawford yeah, versus yeah. Campbell. Hold, hold, hold it, young man. A quantum who? Aren't you a lawyer? No. Are you? I am. Well, now, isn't that nice? Look, how do you expect to judge this case if you don't know the law? Oh, no. Nobody knows the law better. Yeah, where's the law at, honey? Oh, here, Daddy. Oh, thank you, dear. Ah, here it is, right here. It says, uh... Anybody who don't pay his bills is breaking the law and goes to jail until he does. Eh? That's what it says here. You're breaking the law, all right. 
I'd like to know the origin of those laws. Yeah, I'd be glad to tell you. Duly passed by the mayor and the town council. I'd like to discuss this with the mayor. Oh, sure thing. Start discussion. You're the mayor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe and Elmer and me is the town council. Oh, you win this one, Jared, and you're ready to sit on the United States Supreme Court. Twenty-eight dollars. Thirty-eight. What's the extra ten for? Court costs. Now, look, this is highway robbery. There ought to be a law against you. This is the most outrageous thing Pay I... Pay him. I always say a man's best friend is his mother. Oh, I can't take any more of this. I'll pay. I'll pay. There, we're square. Uh-huh. Now what? Uh, a little matter of contempt of court. I don't believe this. Oh, I do. Outrageous highway robbery. Uh, it's pretty strong words, young fellow. See, uh, I wonder what that's worth. What I am thinking is worth at least one hundred dollars. You say a hundred dollars? That sounds about right to me. I trust your judgment, young fellow. After all, you went to law school. Not a good that's done us. Look, whose side are you on? Apparently the wrong one. Let's see now. A hundred dollars will do it. All I've got is ninety dollars. There. Now, I assume that you will accept our bank draft for the extra forty-eight. Yeah, why would you assume a thing like that? Oh, Your Honor, I'm Victoria Barclay, and I assure you that bank draft will be honored by our bank in Stockton. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, but this ain't Stockton. This is Mineral Springs. Then may we talk to your local banker? Oh, sure thing. I uh, said we got no bank. No bank? No. There's a bank over in Brazzo. May we send our draft over there to be cashed? Uh, everything over in Brazzo is controlled by Ed Crawford, including the bank. Uh, why would he cash your draft? It's just possible he's heard of us and will cash it. Oh. All right, you uh, you make it out and I'll send it over. Uh, Pete, uh, ride over to Brazzo and uh, see if you'll cash this. That's for one hundred dollars. Well, you got ninety now. You only need another fifty-eight. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a little extra cash. We may run into another town like this on the way to Stockton. And may I correct your arithmetic? I only need forty-eight more dollars, not fifty-eight. Nothing wrong with my arithmetic. There's another ten dollars now. Messenger charge. Course adjourned. Well, of course I know about the Barclays. Be happy to cash a draft of theirs any time. Although it's hard to imagine the Barclays being in need of... Such a piddling sum as this. I guess they ran a little short. Yes, I guess so. Well, you just tell them to feel free to call on me anytime. And please, present my respects to them. Now, what do you suppose the Barclays are doing in Mineral Springs? Oh, just passing through, probably. Yes, well, I hope so. Uh, the quietest prisoners we've ever had. They sure are nice folks. Mm-hmm. Seem to be. Do they have to stay in jail, Pa? Well, seeing as how we're holding their buggy. They couldn't get very far. I mean, it, it doesn't seem right to keep them cooped up. You're sweet and thoughtful, Janie. Just like your ma. You're very quiet. I'm planning a jailbreak. Wrong file. The money come? Uh, not yet. And we're letting you out till it arrives. Well, this sudden trust in us is very touching. Now, Janie here thought she'd been cooped up a little too long. Oh, aren't you afraid we'll try to run away? No, we ain't. We got your buggy, you know. Uh, and I'm not much of a runner on an empty stomach. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm. Well... <laughs> Oh, I'd be glad to fix you some lunch. No charge. Oh, that's very kind of you, but do you mind if I fix the lunch? Oh, you don't want to bother? Oh, yes, she does. Uh, Why don't you just come along and join us? This 
newspaper is two weeks old. How often do you get deliveries here? Whenever someone passing through leaves one behind. Lunch will be ready in a minute. It smells marvelous. It sure does. She's a good cook. I, I suppose you'll be leaving when Pete comes back with the money. That's right. Unless, of course, your father, uh, the judge, finds another one of those little laws in that book of his. He won't. Your mother's nice. Runs in a family. I... I don't suppose you could stay a while. Oh, Jenny, I'm afraid this town is just a little too rich for our blood. Sit down a minute. Tell me something. Why does a pretty girl like you stay here? It's my home. And Papa's home. And it's a... It was a nice place. Here we are. Ah. Well, this is... Thank you. This is like a party. Mm-hmm. Now. Oh. Mmm. This is good. I wish I could cook. My mama died when I was a baby, and Papa didn't know how to teach me. It's so unfair to Joe, you know, me working in the kitchen. Why do you? I'm about all that's available. Well, where is everybody? I moved away, mostly. Why? I guess there's no point in pretending. The town is dying. Nobody even comes through here anymore. Well, I, uh, I can't say that I blame them. Oh, but it wasn't always like this. See, Grandpa started this town, and Papa helped build it. And it was a nice place. There was almost 500 people that lived around here once. I mean, good people. Farming and ranching and running small businesses and building futures. Now, there's less than 100. What happened? That Ed Crawford put his hands around this town's throat and squeezed. Well, it seems to me it'd take a pretty big pair of hands to do that. Well, he did it. He built a brand new road through Brazo and gradually got all the traffic from here. Then he set up twice a day stagecoach service and once a day freight wagons. And our stages only ran three times a week and our freight wagons once a week. And we couldn't compete. And eventually all the people moved to Brazo where things were booming. Now we're just doing what we can to hang on. Janie. You mean that you're trying to support this town by bilking unsuspecting travelers like us? And we hate it, but we we have to do something. We have to pay for the school books for the kids and pay for a part-time school teacher and try to keep a doctor in town and repairs and... And that detour sign? That was my idea. I guess it's terrible, but we just had to get the people through here somehow. Well, you can't keep on doing that forever. Maybe not. But we're just not going to let that Ed Crawford kill our town without a fight. At least we're trying. Well, Pete's back. The fine is paid, and here's your change. Good. And your buggy's outside, and you're free to go anytime you want. All right. Something smells good. Well, Mrs. Barkley's a wonderful cook. Hey, a couple riders coming in. I better get Joe. I gotta get things ready. Thank for bread and butter. <laughs> I wish Audra and Heath were here for this. Not that funny, Nick. <laughs> of course it isn't. $148 to stay overnight. Who's running the town, the Dalton gang? They're really very decent people. Of course they are. When are you going back for another visit? A couple of days. 
<laughs> what for? To finish reading Birds of North America? Nope. We're going into business there. Stagecoach line and a freight service. From Mineral Springs all the way through the valley to Stockton. You're not serious. He is serious. Oh, well, now, come on, Jared. Just because you feel sorry for him. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with that. We talked it over all the way back, and it makes sense. All right, all right. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa. What kind of a deal did you make with him? Oh, well, uh, they don't know anything about it yet. We may be gone a couple of weeks. We? Oui. Well, why do you have to go along? Oh, I don't have to. I want to. Maybe I can help. Have you forgotten? I used to help my family run a freight service. Matter of fact, that's how I met your father. And it sure brought me good luck. With my experience, maybe I can bring them some good luck. <laughs> Mother, you sure are some. <laughs> Ted, aren't I, though? <laughs> I don't understand. Those wagons got our name on them. Why not? We're partners. That don't seem right, Miss Barkley. We can't even pay our share of the cost. You'll pay your share by the work you do and the facilities you provide at this end. Hey, you see that old empty store over there? Make a great depot. Why would you want to help us? It's a business venture. And if we're successful, it will be good for you, us, and the whole valley. Makes a lot of sense, Ben. We in business, partner? <laughs> That's going to look just fine, Lou. How are you doing with those schedules? Well, I've got the one worked out from Mineral Springs to Stockton, but not the one from Stockton to Mineral Springs. Well, what's the problem? You just reverse them. Uh-uh. Have you forgotten that long hill seven miles out of Stockton? Well, what about it? Well, it doesn't much matter going down the hill. But going up in the heat of midday, well, it's slow and tiring for the horses, uncomfortable for the passengers. What I'm trying to work out is a schedule that will get the freights and stages up the hill in the cool of mid-morning or late afternoon. You know that Nick is right for once? You really are something. <laughs> that it? That's it. stage just came in. No passengers again. Been in business a week and only had five passengers all that time. The freight we've been hauling won't even pay for the horse's feed. We can't go on like this, Miss Barkley, letting you pay everybody's salaries with nothing to show for it. Well, we're not complaining. Why should you? Well, it just don't seem right. Then people are used to doing business in Brat, so give them time. They'll come to us. But will they? Sure they will, and starting tomorrow. Seems to me you're building up a lot of rash hopes, Miss Barkley. Oh, I don't think so. When the morning stage leaves for Stockton, if there are no paying customers, we'll fill it with non-paying townspeople, and we'll fill the freights with empty boxes. Well, I don't understand. What good is that going to do? Well, when people see our freights and stages going through loaded, they'll start coming to us. Business attracts business, and illusion becomes a fact. That sounds kind of crazy, Jared like the idea? Uh-huh. He's out now looking for uh, non-paying customers. Morning, Mr. Carlton. Bert. Everything going well? Well, uh, I don't know. Anderson didn't show with his load this morning. Gilman, Miller, they didn't show yesterday. Uh, now, perhaps they're just not ready to ship yet. Maybe. But, 
couple of boys been telling me they've been seeing them wagons from Mineral Springs all loaded up and making the runs. Are the Barclays still in Mineral Springs? What are you? Tell Stockton to run an extra wagon if they have to. We may need additional drivers. I hope so. Hey, is that uh, real business or make-believe? That's the real thing, Elmer. <laughs> Boy, it sure beats arresting horse hitchers, don't it? <laughs> the Barclays. That's right. What can we do for you? A little business, perhaps. Well, that's what we're here for. Good, good. I'm Ed Crawford. Oh, I see you heard of me. Good. Well, of course, I've heard of you, and I like what I hear. That's nice. Yeah. You're the kind of people that get things done. So am I. You mentioned business. Right to the point. I like that, too. Yes. Some business that would mean something. Now, people like you shouldn't be mixed up with these small-time scroungers. No, this town and everyone in it is gasping its last. Oh? Well, we'll see. Of course, you could breathe a little life into it for a while. But is that what you want? What is it you want? To do business with you. Now, Brazzo has become the center of things in this part of the valley. Stockton is the center of things out your way. Now, if we pool our strengths and work together, we could control this entire county. Well, what makes you think we want to control this county? You see, all we really want to control is you. Well, perhaps you think it over and reconsider. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you think they're going to give us any trouble? Am I? If you don't know what to do... I just can't understand it, Ben. In a week, we've lost almost all the business we've built up. There's got to be some explanation for it. I've been talking to people, but everyone's clammed up. Never had trouble talking to them before. It's like they were scared. <laughs> Elmer, you're drunk. Hey, drink, you get drunk. But on duty? I see my duty and I've done it. Uh, Jeff Gray does not like to drink alone. Now, you, you get out of here and go sleep it off someplace. I ain't that drunk. And Mr. Barkley and I got some business to discuss. So have I. Jeff's freight business. Which we don't happen to have anymore. Uh, ben, you know, you know Jeff. Sober, you can't get a word out of him. <laughs> well, drunk, you can't shut him up. Now, wait a minute. You mean you got him to talk? Matched him drink for drink. He sprung like a leaky trough. Jeff has been threatened. By who? Even Jeff doesn't know. A couple of fellas showed up at his ranch the other night. Said they knew he'd been shipping out of Mineral Springs. If he didn't start shipping out of Brazo, they'd burn him out. And all the others, too? According to Jeff. Well, it's Crawford's men. There isn't any doubt about that. But what I can't figure out is how they know who's shipping what. Now, did Jeff have any idea about that? No. But I do. I've been noticing. A couple of strangers been hanging around a depot lately. You know, watching the wagons coming and going. Yeah, who's shipping and who's bringing stuff in, right? And watching the stagecoaches. Come here. I want to show you something.
Yeah. You see those two guys over there? They're not from around here. And yeah, when'd you first notice them, Elmer? Uh, they rode in this morning before the first wagon went out. And they're probably waiting around for the afternoon wagon to come in. Tonight, whoever's doing business with us is going to be paid a visit. Not if they're in jail. They ain't broke no law. Ben, your handwriting is terrible. Yeah, what you looking for, Jared? You must have an ordinance in here against loitering. I reckon we don't. Reckon we ought to? I reckon. Well, there's three of us on the town council. There's Joe, and there's Elmer, and there's me. Got a majority right here. All loiterers will be arrested. How's that? Uh, that sounds legal to me. Al Elmer, do you think you can handle it? Ben. The day I can't outdrink Jeff Gray, I'll turn in my badge. Man. Yeah. You know, galloping down a busy street like this just isn't safe. I'd run down some of those innocent women and children. Good point. Guess we'll have to write another law. Elmer? No galloping on busy street. Anything in the book about, uh, excuse me, ladies, spitting? No, there will be in a minute. You think jail's big enough? Oh, sure. No spitting, excuse me, ladies, out loud. Are you holding some of my men? Oh, they yours? On what charge? A whole slew of things. Violation of ordinances number 27, 28, 29, 30. Be more specific. Loitering, galloping, gunning, and spitting. Is your idea? Who, me? No, no. He's the mayor, they're the town council. I'm just an interested observer, that's all. And I hear you're a lawyer. Well, that's right. And as such, I'd like to give you a little free but valuable advice. You and your men stay out of this town. <laughs> or you'll do what? Build a bigger jail, right, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. What do I have to do to get my men released? Yeah, paying a fine will help. How much? Let's see now. That comes to uh, $340. the guns. They're confiscated. Everyone in town is wearing one. Local residents got a right. Ordinance number 32.
Yes, just a minute. What? Ordinance number 33. Smoking in a public building. Fine will be ten dollars. Never said a thing. Oh, uh, he said a lot. Loud and clear. Mr. Crawford has just declared war, gentlemen. He's going to be all right. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Doc's got him all fixed up. All he needs now is some rest. What are you going to do? Well, we can't send the wagons out anymore without armed guards. There aren't any around here. So I've wired my brother Nick to hire the men we need. They should arrive tomorrow. No, no! Well, we've got to do something. What's the matter with you? Hasn't there been enough damage? Are you going to keep going until someone gets killed? Oh. Wait a minute. What's this? Janie? Here, come on. Now you dry those tears. Come on. Please, go home. Go back to Stockton. Well, once you thought it was a pretty good idea if I stayed. Yes, and I meant it. And once you said you weren't going to let Ed Crawford kill this town, you were going to fight. Well, that's all I'm doing. Not that kind of fighting, Jared. We did a lot of wrong things, I guess. Overcharging and fining. But nobody was really hurt. I don't like people to be hurt. Well, I know you don't, Janie, but sometimes you... I, I wanted you and your mother to stay. Because you're nice people. And I think nothing nice was happening here. And then when you said you'd stay and help us... That was the happiest thing that's ever happened to me. Well, I'm still here, aren't I? But it's not like I thought it would be. Well, sometimes things just don't work out the way you expect. For people like me, maybe. I'm not smart or educated. But you are. And that's why you shouldn't be fighting Ed Crawford his way. Well, what else can I do? I've tried everything. Sometimes you just have to stand up and fight. It's all a man like that can understand anyway. That's why a man like you should be able to outsmart him. Oh. Why'd you do that? I guess because I wanted to.
you, too. Nick, you look awful. Where the devil have you been? You were supposed to be here this morning. Uh, about my looks. 25-mile walk on that road in the sun is not exactly any beauty treatment, you know. What happened? Bushwhack, just the other side of a big rock. 20 of them, nine of us. And they turned our horses loose. Anybody hurt? No, but if that was the Crawford gang and they were trying to get a message across, it sure worked. The men I brought with me, they're on their way back to Stockton. They all quit, huh? On the spot. If word of this gets around, we won't be able to hire guards for all the money in Stockton. Oh, well, isn't there any kind of law around here? Not enough. Not even enough to go in there and arrest this Crawford? On what charge? We don't have any proof that he's raiding our wagons. Well, now, what kind of proof do you need? Nick, his men always wear masks and they don't take the wagon, so we can't catch him with the goods. So isn't there some way we can make them take the wagon? And how do you propose to do that? They're not interested in loot. Oh, maybe they're just not interested in the kind of loot you're carrying. Oh, everything's always so simple for you. What am I supposed to do? Just ship something they'd like, like a load of harem girls or... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You may have an idea there. Harem girls? No. But something that would make them just as dizzy. No. All right, now just throw down your gun. Start walking. idea that's the kind of cargo Mr. Crawford wouldn't want us to burn. Uh, Mr. Crawford said, never get caught with the U.S. mail. Get rid of that sack. champagne from Europe last year. I never figured we'd be using it this way. Yeah, well, we... We did want it for a special occasion. Well, this is a special occasion. Mm -hmm. seen the blaze. Well, there must be some more stables in town. Hold it. Wait a minute. Wet paint. I'll get it hitched up. Thank you. 
What do you want? I'd like to see Ed Crawford, please. What, this hour? Not on your life. Not on your life. Oh, if I wake him now, he'll kill me. Would you rather be killed by a friend or an enemy? Don't forget the key. Mr. Crawford. Get out of there. Huh. What is this? Some kind of a joke? No joke. You're under arrest. Are you crazy? You can't arrest me. Oh, can't I? Well, now, that is a U.S. deputy badge. My, what good eyes you have, Grandma. Where'd you get that? Ben Moore introduced me to a federal marshal. Now, get out of there. Well, now, just a minute. Please, you gonna let me get dressed? Why, I think you look perfectly fetching the way you are. I couldn't help it, Mr. Crawford. He made me. Get over here. Now, you make so much as one little peep, and Mr. Crawford may get hurt. And I don't think Mr. Crawford wants that, does he? Just be quiet and do like he says. Get in there. He's not too smart. Did you hear that? What's that? Go on, tell him. I said, for a lawyer, you're not too smart. So perhaps that wagon was stolen. But you didn't see me take it. So you broke into my private property to get it and get me. Now, as a federal officer, if you are one, you have to have reason to believe that I had committed a federal offense in order to do that. And stealing a wagon is hardly a federal offense. So your breaking in was unlawful entry, search and seizure. Well, I think that sounded pretty good. What about you, Counselor? Excellent, excellent. You amaze me, Mr. Crawford. I couldn't have stated the law any more perfectly myself. Let's go. The federal judge will have to release me. It isn't as if U.S. mail were involved. Ah, but it was, Mr. Crawford. Nick? A second bag. Second bag. There's one other offense, Mr. Crawford. Going around in public in that nice shirt. I'm going to have to charge you with indecent exposure. 